I guess that C went hanging there. Um, some of the demographic uh, changes that uh, affect the Arctic. Um, through much of the Arctic, we're seeing a population loss. And so from this map, what you see is the red areas and pink areas are areas that are losing population in the Arctic. And the areas of blue are the ones that are gaining them. Uh, the funny little dots in the Canadian part of the Arctic is, are, are due to the way we collect statistics uh, uh, for settled points versus uh, um, districts or larger areas. Um, but this uh, shows you that there are a lot of uh, um, areas of loss of population. Birth rates among uh, um, Arctic residents are fairly low. Uh, a little bit lower among the non-indigenous than the indigenous population, but relatively low. Um, mortality rates are higher on average uh, for the Arctic residents than non-Arctic parts of these uh, populations of these same countries. Um, but the main influence is out-migration. And what we see is sometimes referred to the hollowing out of the population, especially from rural areas. Young adults are migrating out and sometimes leaving uh, their children even behind. What we're losing are the most ambitious and most skilled people. Now, some of this is due to push factors, the decline of local resources, such as fish stocks, or the, the decline of services in the Russian north. We had a crash in services during the late 1990s. But a lot of it has to do with pull factors. One has to leave the Arctic in many cases to uh, receive education or uh, jobs. I should say that this trend has reversed in a few areas in recent uh, times. There are more people going back to the uh, Norwegian north and the uh, Feniscandian north, as you can see from a little bit of blue there. The red sort of predominates, but uh, um, in most parts we see a domination of pink and red. Um, Urbanization, as I said, is increasing in the Arctic, as elsewhere in the world. And again, this is a map which shows areas that are increasing in population in urban centers and other areas where uh, um, urban or villages are, are decreasing. Um, and so what we see is, um, in most places, the urban populations are increasing. Only again in Russia, there is some decrease in the urban population. Um, the pace is different, but the trend is the same across the Arctic. And this is a trend for both the indigenous and the non-indigenous uh, part of the population. 10% of uh, Canadian Inuit live in southern urban areas. There's a joke that the largest Sami community in uh, um, Finland lives in Helsinki, and the largest Sami community in uh, uh, Sweden lives in Stockholm. 7,000 Greenlanders live in Denmark, most of them in Copenhagen. The population of Greenland is 55,000 people, so 7,000 is a pretty large percentage of that. That's 13% of the total population. Um, urbanization, urbanization means uh, changes in lifestyle, increasingly uh, diversified economy, better services in education, better services in child care, more diverse cultural activities, more diverse social relations. Urbanization has a gender dimension. Women are leaving rural places at a much greater rate than men are. This is because men tend to stay more in the traditional economic sectors and women are leaving to pursue formal education and uh, the jobs that they can have from that formal education. And this has a negative effect on rural areas and the rural economy. It affects family uh, structure. It's very hard for reindeer herders in the northern part of Siberia to find wives these days. It affects public services. It affects the volunteer sector, as women tend to predominate in the volunteer sector. There are a few areas, like I mentioned, where this is changing, but it is, for the most part, a trend throughout the Nordic. Then we have another really interesting trend where groups are coming into the Arctic who previously weren't seen in the Arctic as global migration increases around the world. Immigrants from Thailand are coming into Feniscandia as berry pickers. They're coming into Alaska as fish processors. Immigrants from Eastern Europe are coming into some of the mining, country, uh, mining areas of uh, the Arctic. Um, it's predicted that uh, industrial resource development in Greenland 
may attract up to 2,500 Chinese in the very near future. And again, 2,500 seems like a fairly small number until you think of a population of 55,000. 5% of the Greenland population could uh, be a Chinese resident soon. Okay, a little bit on the Arctic economy. I think we can split the Arctic economy into three, three different sectors. You've got the international resource economy, oil, gas, minerals, uh, fisheries, forestry. And these areas are indicated on the map, some of the main uh, uh, centers. I think we sometimes forget about the role that the transfer economy plays. This is the money that the capitals send north, Ottawa and Washington, D.C., and Moscow, and uh, uh, Helsinki and Trump's uh, uh, Oslo, are sending north to support the north. And that is a big part of the northern economy. And then finally, the traditional economy of lo local resource extraction, fishing, reindeer husbandry, hunting, uh, those kinds of things. And these uh, activities occupy the same space, but they often aren't very well connected. They are connected a little. A woman working in an office in the transfer economy has a little bit more money, perhaps, to invest in a snowmobile or an ammunition to spend her weekends out on the land hunting. Uh, so these things are to give her husband the money to uh, spend out on the land. Uh, these uh, um, activities are also highly sensitive to outside forces. So there's a lot of boom and bust, especially in the uh, international resource economy and also in the transfer economy. And it has a lot to do with political interventions can change things quite quickly. I wanted to mention a few other changes that are happening in the Arctic economy that we often don't think about. And these are commoditization and privatization and uh, concentration, geographical concentration. So in terms of commoditization, we see in the Arctic the replacement of services that were formerly provided by the residents for themselves, and now they're being commoditized. Child care used to be pro provided by your grandmas and your aunties. Now you end up sending your kids to a, a creche or a, a nursery school. Um, Health care services. You used to have medical experts uh, from among the native population. Now uh, we use uh, um, professional doctors. Leisure activities become more and more commoditized. Privatization, including in fishing and mining, housing services, retail services. They used to be mainly cooperative. And this is true for both North America and the Soviet North. Even reindeer herding is now being privatized in Fenoscandia and the Russian North. We see the development of small businesses. And I think it's interesting to look at Canada in the development of, of businesses, especially among the indigenous population. The Inuit and the uh, First Nations in northern Canada have been more successful than the non-indigenous population in creating small businesses in some areas partly due to treaty settlement and the capital or the money that they've received that they can then invest in airlines and, and uh, stores and things like that. In terms of resource extraction, which is going to play an increasing role in the Arctic, much is uh, concentrated or increasingly concentrated geographically in terms of company towns. These company towns often don't really help the local economy Workers come in and fly back out, and there's very little interaction with the local uh, people. We're also increasingly seeing local people raising the issues about ownership to the region's natural resources. Who should own them? Who should have access to them? Who should be able to exclude others from them? Under what terms? And who should benefit from resource extraction how should the benefits uh, be shared between the local population and the distant shareholders of companies? And how should they be uh, managed so that generations down the line, two, three, four generations, can also benefit from the extraction of resources that are happening today? And these are big and difficult questions. Some of the external drivers that I think we have to keep in mind 
are uh, the uh, global rise in raw materials prices, and especially because of the demand um, from uh, uh, places like China and India and other Asian countries. And also increasing accessibility makes these resources, which were formerly not uh, economically viable, to now be uh, economically um, interesting. There are areas that are losing population in the Arctic, and the areas of blue are the ones that are gaining them. Uh, the funny little dots in the Canadian part of the Arctic is, are, are due to the way we collect statistics uh, uh, for settled points versus uh, um, districts or larger areas. Um, but this uh, shows you that there are a lot of uh, um, areas of loss of population. I guess that C went hanging there. Um, some of the demographic uh, changes that uh, affect the Arctic. Um, through much of the Arctic, we're seeing a population loss. And so from this map, what you see is the red areas and pink areas. And what we see is sometimes referred to the hollowing out of the population, especially from rural areas. Young adults are migrating out and sometimes leaving uh, their children even behind. What we're losing are the most ambitious and most skilled people. Now, some of this is due to push factors, the decline of local resources such as fish stocks, or the birth rates among uh, um, Arctic residents are fairly low, uh, a little bit lower among the non-indigenous and the indigenous population, but relatively low. Um, mortality rates are higher on average. Uh, for the Arctic residents and non Arctic parts of these uh, populations of these same countries. Um, but the main influence is out migration. Uh, the decline of services in the Russian north, we had a crash in services during the late 1990s. But a lot of it has to do with pull factors. One has to leave the Arctic in many cases to uh, receive education or uh, jobs. I should say that this trend has reversed in a few areas in recent uh, times. There are more people going back to the uh, Norwegian north.